Hello everyone, welcome to this tutorial. My name is Emerson Ahrari, I'm a Google Earth Engine expert. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to monitor Los Angeles wildfire using various data in Google Earth Engine platform and Python API programming. So as you can see in this tutorial, you will learn to plot the daily NDVI that shows when uh, a wildfire actually or the fire started, as you can see. As mentioned in the news, the fire started since January 7, and here you can see for the region of interest from January 7, 2025, uh, the wildfire started from this area and very quickly spread to a large region. And as you can see, most of the vegetation covers destroyed after the wildfire. And you can compare the early days vegetation cover and uh, the next days after fire spread to another region. Most of the vegetated area or vegetation cover in this area burned and uh, actually caused a lot of uh, damages to the households and areas and environment in this region. So I will show you how to do this monitoring using NDVI data, NDVI virus data that available uh, with a daily frequency. And also I will show you how to find the fire active area using another products thanks to virus data in the Earth Engine platform. And also you will learn how to plot uh, temp land surface temperature using virus data. As you can see, after starting uh, the fire actually in uh, January 7, you can see the temperature in this area highly increased and you can see a clear anomaly uh, by comparing in the burned area and surrounding region. And here you can see this pattern uh, actually uh, correspond to those area in which vegetation cover destroyed in this period of time. Okay, now in this step, I'm gonna actually start programming in the Colab environment. Just make a new page on your uh, Chrome or browser and go to colab.research.google.com and make a new notebook just like this very easy and without any challenge so as you know we want to do this uh, tutorial in the colab environment by making connection between colab and google earth engine platform so in the first step it is necessary to call some essential libraries that allowing us to make a bridge between uh, earth engine and colab and python and python environment so import GEE map and import X array structure X array or uh, array as XR let's run the cell and now as you can see uh, the collab the notebook is connecting to the server and after then the library is imported hopefully all of these libraries already built in available in collab environments and no need for their installation first but for the XEE it is essential to do this process so we need to install install XEE uh, actually the XEE is a kind of new library developed by Google allowing us to convert the image collection into array structure so it can search about Google Earth Engine XEE. The first link uh, most likely is a GitHub link that shows an instruction about XEE. As you can see, the XEE is a X array and uh, integrating X array and Google Earth Engine functions together. That's really, really helpful for data analysis. Most of the previous tutorials I've published on my YouTube channel is about how to deal with XEE, how to deal with satellite data, and how to apply machine learning algorithm using XEE on image collection, existing collection in the Earth Engine platform. So uh, after libraries, uh, uh, installed and imported completely in the next step we want to make a bridge using the existing libraries so first start with authentication process and then 
earth engine that initialize we want to initialize our account in this area project uh, equals to the uh, you need to enter your cloud google cloud id that is connected to your code editor environment for example if you look at here uh, go to the code editor environment first and then in the upper right at the corner here you can see your account information just go to the project info and find your own cloud project then copy and paste it into the co uh, into the collab environment as a project enough interface image collection go to the google earth engine data catalog uh, and then go to the browse by tags when you go to browse by tags now here you can find your desired data based on a keyword for example we want to use the view satellite data there are 21 data sets um, actually uh, uh, we tag it as Veers product that is available one of them is Veer surface reflectance daily with 500 meter and one kilometer resolution here and now you can see the different bands and wavelengths resolution that could be beneficial to understanding about the band's application for example i1 and i2 these two bands refers to red and near infrared region with 500 meter resolution that could be a good option for ndvi analysis first let's call the image collection uh, for the uh, surface reflectance data in the first step and then make a filter date and limit your data to a period of time let's make two variable as time start and time end because we will have couple of image collection and it is easier to call them using a same variable in filter date to avoid repeating date so for example i'm gonna call all images for to, uh, january 2025 for example here and from time starts to an ending to time end then select the target bands that here is i number one and i number two here it is i number one and i number two selected these are the uh, essential bands we need to calculate the ndvi there is a problem here i have a typo here that select now surface reflectance is called in the next step one x as the final value with uh, existing properties that's copy properties is ndvi equals to get surface reflectance data and apply ndvi function on existing image collection if you want to make sure uh, the calculation is right and there is no problem just write the get just use the get info function just like this so if there is a problem if returns any error meaning that you did something wrong here otherwise if you see the data properties and characteristic uh, actually it confirms that you, uh, everything is fine and uh, and you can go to the next step okay in the next step i'm gonna actually convert the ndvi from image collection format sorry it's a very long description here yes in the next step i'm gonna convert the viewers ndvi from image collection format to a x array structure so that's why we will have a new data for ndvi engine sets to ee so and the next and this is about scale and the next one is about the geometry equals to the roi so there it is and run the data set for ndvi seems uh, sounds everything is fine 
just make a print from NDVI data set for, ja uh, for January 25. So here you can see we have NDVI for the region of interest. Now in the next step, I'm going to make a multi-temporal plot that shows the NDVI variation from early days in January to the uh, last day of January in 2025. Just make a new cell and type dataset NDVI and select the NDVI as a target band and the plot some arguments necessary such as latitude and longitude x dimension sets to lat call, then call wrap uh, actually uh, allow us to set the number of images or number of the time we want to have in each row for example we want to have uh, for example uh, six image in each row it's a lower number of images helping to have a bigger windows for imaging uh, for actually visualization and allow us to increase the quality for the visualization uh, too so uh, the next one is here just uh, change the c map to the jet that providing a better uh, color palette for visual interpretation that is essential and helping you to make a better contrast and uh, insight about the situation in this area as you can see here and clearly you can see how much vegetation cover degraded after uh, after the wildfire in this area so even in the next step you can use the view satellite data to see the temperature variation over this area just make a new cell and uh, try to call another image collection go back to the browse by tags and views data, ta uh, views data tag it here. Uh, you can see the another product is thermal anomalies fire daily L3 with one kilometer spatial resolution. Its spatial resolution is a little bit coarser, but uh, still can provide useful information for the uh, t uh, for the uh, temperature analysis, uh, wildfire analysis from temperature point of view. Okay, and another variable here could be, for example, temperature layer equals to the data set snippets available here just do a simple copy and paste select the target band then for example the target band here is uh, there are the max fire radiative power here the max power uh, actually maximum fire radiative power uh, that help us to actually uh, highlight the burned area or the burned area uh, based on the temperature differences with surrounding region that select the target band and then uh, select the period of time already time start and time end okay let's run the temperature and now we need to convert the temperature into a x array structure so as you can see the same procedure we already used for the dsndvi now we can use for uh, temperate data equals to from x array call open data set and then the kind of called rse sets to epsg 4326 this is a 500 meter in degree units and the region interest equals to the roi let's run a code now you will have the uh, temperature image collection with a multi-dimensional frame structure let's call ds temperature data and select the target band that is maximum that is max FRP you can copy and paste it dot plot same as NDI 
x dimension sets to longitude one attitude color map sets to hot this time i'm gonna use the hot color palette uh, that is really really applicable for the wildfire monitoring and temperature anomaly detection Call have a multi-temporal radiative power map for the temperature call equals to time call wrap sets to five boss is the ls and time end there it is so convert it to a data set lst equals to from each array a call the open data set automatically crs epsg 4326k and then geometry equals to roi the lsd data now is ready and you can use the same scenario for the actually visualization dslsd dot select press on tab just like this when you press on tab the rest of the code added automatically let's try with hot uh, color map for the lsd data okay let's run a code after a few moments now here it is you will have lsd layer for the region of interest that you can see uh, the uh, some smoked area or some of the areas covered by smoke converted to the no data in this product but uh, actually in the non-smoked area you can see the temperature in the burning zone increasing a lot and now you can see the temperature increasing and increasing the maximum value detected in uh, January 23 uh, with very high actually in intensity unfortunately the rest of the days missed because of the cloud cover or a smoke a pattern that's why we cannot actually uh, giving further information about its variation so now you actually understand how to do monitor the day by day variations in the uh, wildfire detection and also there are various potential and bands in the uh, view satellite data that allowing us to do this monitoring with the near real-time data that could be really really beneficial and I'm highly suggesting to use this product for your own studies and also if you want to get exports from the output uh, from this plot it's very simple just uh, try to import dpi equals to 300 and bb box inches also inches equals to tight to have all the map elements into a single layer let's run a code after a few moments in the left panel you will have ndvi fire layer as with a png format okay once the process is done you can find your data here just click on download and after a few moments you can have it as a separate file with the highest quality that is very very useful for the studies okay now you can zoom in and see the and see that you have an output with a very high quality i hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you had any question or problem feel free to reach me out and put your comments on my youtube channel thank you for your attention